Welcome to the Daily Current Affairs by Civic Center IAS, where we try to discuss the important articles from the Hindu, the Indian Express, and the PIB from the UPSC CSC prelims perspective. Displayed are the list of articles which we are going to discuss in today's video. The first article of the day says that the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, has approved the increase in minimum support price for all mandated rabi crops for the 2025-26 marketing season. Significantly, this decision aims to ensure remunerative prices for farmers and promote crop diversification. In this context, let us look at the key details. Firstly, if we look at the MSP increases, the rap seed and the mustard seed have the highest increase of 300 rupees per quintal. Then the lentil, which is 275 rupees per quintal, gram 210 rupees per quintal, wheat 150 rupees per quintal, Safflower uh, 140 rupees per quintal and lastly barley worth 130 rupees per quintal. Significantly, the MSP increase aligns with the Union Budget 2018-19, which mandated MSPs at least 1.5 times uh, the All India Weighted Average cost of production. Now, moving on to talk about the uh, MSP, see it is a market intervention by the Government of India aimed at uh, protecting farmers uh, from sharp declines in crop prices, especially during the bumper production years. Seed ensures farmers receive a guaranteed uh, price for the produce even if the market prices fall. Know that the purpose is to safeguard uh, agricultural producers from sharp uh, price declines. Also to support uh, farmers in case of bumper production and market gut. So MSP is announced by the government of India at the start of the sowing season. Notably it is based on the recommendations of the commission of our agriculture costs and prices. See, it provides a guaranteed price for certain crops ensuring farmers are not forced into distress sales. So the government agencies step in to purchase the entire quantity offered by the farmers if the market prices fall below the MSP. So the objective would be to protect uh, farmers from price volatility and ensure they have uh, received fair compensation and to procure food grains for public distribution. The next article says that India AI Mission has uh, selected eight responsible AI projects under its safe and trusted AI pillar aiming to promote the responsible development, deployment and adoption of the AI technologies. Significantly, the initiative aligns with the Government of India's vision to advance AI for inclusive growth while ensuring ethical, transparent and trustworthy AI practices. In this context, let us talk about the India AI mission. See, the Indian cabinet has approved an allocation of over 10,300 crore rupees for the India AI mission marking a major milestone in the strengthening of India's AI ecosystem. Furthermore, this investment spread over five years aims to advance various initiatives and ensure structured implementation through a public-private partnership model. Now, if you have to talk about its vision, see the India AI mission under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology aims to democratize AI benefits across the society, bolster India's global leadership in AI, foster a technological self-reliance and ensure ethical and responsible AI use. Notably, there are seven key components to this mission, which are India AI Compute Capacity, India AI Innovation Center, India AI Datasets Platform, India AI Application Development Initiative, India AI Future Skills Program, India AI Startup Financing, and lastly, Safe and Trusted AI. The third article of the day says that the constitution bench headed by Chief Justice he is scheduled to pronounce the judgment on Thursday on the constitutionality of the Section 6A of the Citizenship Act of 1955. In this context, let us talk about Section 6A of the Citizenship Act. See, the Section 6A was introduced into the Citizenship Act in the year 1955 as part of the Assam Accord, which is a memorandum of settlement signed on August 15th of 1985 between the Government of India and the leaders of the Assam movement. Know that the provision was created in response to the humanitarian crisis caused by the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War and to address the issue of cross-border migration into Assam. If you have to look at the key provisions of the Section 6A, see the foreigners who entered Assam before January 1 of 1966 and were ordinarily resident in the state would have all the rights and obligations of Indian citizens. Furthermore, those who entered Assam between January 1 of 1966 and March 25 of 1971 would also enjoy the same rights, but they would not be able to vote for 10 years. So, the cutoff date for determining the foreigner status in Assam was established as uh, 
March 25th of 1971. Interestingly, this cut-off date is upheld could create a conflict with the Citizenship Amendment Act, uh, which has a different timeline and may be seen as violating the Assam Accord. So, what is the Constitution challenge? See, a five-judge Constitution bench headed by the Chief Justice is set to deliver a verdict on October 17th on the constitutionality of this section. So, the petitioners argue that Assam has been singled out among the India's border states uh, to implement this provision, leading to the issues like increased infiltration. But the Supreme Court has clarified that its role uh, is limited to examining Section 6A and not the Assam National Register of Citizens. The next article here mentions about the Five Eyes Alliance. See, the Five Eyes is an intelligence alliance composed of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom and the United States. Know that these partner countries share a broad range of intelligence uh, with one another in one of the world's most unified multilateral arrangements. Notably, the Five Eyes Agreement stands out from the other arrangements because the parties are diverse societies governed by the rule of law and robust human rights uh, and are bonded by a common language. So, these characteristics aid the partners in sharing information with one another to protect their national, shared national interests. Talking about the International Forum, see the Five Country Ministerial is a forum for the Five Eyes Security Ministers to meet and discuss opportunities for collaboration. Know that topics cover the full range of public safety and national security issues facing each of the Five Eye partners. Furthermore, the Five Country Ministerial can also include a joint meeting between the Five Eye Security Ministers and the Quintet, uh, quintet of the Attorney General in order to bridge the discussions between these two groups. Remember that the Quintet is a group uh, composed of the Attorneys General of the Five Eyes Partners uh, who work to advance legal matters of shared importance. Know that the Five Country Ministerial began in the year 2013. The next article says that a marginal increase in exports driven by textiles, engineering and electronic goods that compensated for lower petroleum exports alongside a sharp decline in global imports helped India's goods trade deficit ease to a 5-month low of 21 billion in September compared to a 10-month high of 30 billion in August according to the official data released on Wednesday. In this context, let us look at the summary of the India's trade performance in uh, September 2024. See, the India's goods uh, trade deficit eased to a 5-month low of $21 billion in September 2024, down from a 10-month high of $30 billion in August. Exports saw a marginal increase driven by textiles, engineering and electronic goods, while petroleum exports declined significantly. Furthermore, gold imports dropped slower sharply by 60%, uh, helping reduce overall imports. Now, let us look at the key factors influencing the trade. See, with respect to the exports, so the total exports rose slightly to $35 billion in September 2024. Furthermore, engineering goods exports, especially to Europe and Russia, surged due to, due to increased military spending. Then, uh, electronic goods, particularly mobile phones, saw a strong demand from the US. Next, textile exports rose by 17% as the garment order shifted from conflict hit Bangladesh to India. Lastly, petroleum exports declined by 26% due to weak global fuel demand despite geopolitical tensions in West Asia. Now, moving on to talk about the imports. See, gold imports uh, plummeted from $10 billion in August to $4 billion in September, reducing overall gold imports to $55 billion. Furthermore, declining gold imports may be linked to traders preparing for the festive season in August. Know that the top export de destinations in September 2024 included the Netherlands, UAE, US, Brazil and Japan. Significantly, top import sources with increased value over uh, the UAE, China, Germany, Japan and Taiwan. The next article says that amid a widening trade deficit with the Association of uh, Southeast Asian Nations, a senior government official said on Wednesday that India is facing tariff asymmetry in the ASEAN agreement and is aiming to complete the review by next year. In this context, let us talk about ASEAN. See, ASEAN is a regional organization comprising of 10 uh, Southeast Asian nations aimed at fostering economic and security cooperation. Know that it is established in 1967. ASEAN now represents a population of 662 million with a combined GDP of uh, $3.2 trillion. Notably, the group is central to Asia's economic integration and plays a key role in regional trade agreements, but its ability to address certain challenges is limited by internal divisions. 
Now, if you have to talk about its member countries, see ASEAN includes Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Then, about its structure and decision making, see ASEAN is chaired by one of its member states rotating annually. Furthermore, decisions are typically made through consultation guided by the principles of non-interference and peaceful conflict resolution. Then, with respect to recent developments, in 2007, the members adopted the ASEAN Charter, which formalized the organization's legal status and institutional framework. Furthermore, the Charter also laid the groundwork for the ASEAN Economic Community, the ASEAN Political uh, Security Community, and the ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community. The last article of the day says that the group of ministers on GST compensation shares, led by the Minister of State for Finance, uh, on Wednesday held discussions uh, regarding potential merger of compensation shares into the goods and services tax. In this context, let us talk about the Goods and Services Tax Compensation to States Act 2017. See, the Goods and Services Tax Compensation to States Act of 2017 was enacted to address uh, revenue, tosses, uh, revenue losses faced by the states uh, due to the implementation of GST. Know that the Act levies a compensation search on selected goods and services for a period of five years uh, starting from July 1 of 2017 or as recommended by the GST Council. Now, if you have to look at the key provisions, firstly, talking about the compensation shares. See, the cess is imposed on certain goods and services uh, to compensate states for any revenue losses caused by the implementation of GST. So, for the goods imported into India, compensation shares is uh, levied on the levy that the time of customs duties are imposed as per Section 3 of the Customs Tariff Act of 1975 and Section 12 of the Customs Act of 1962. Notably, exported goods are exempt from compensation cess and uh, exporters can claim refunds on the input tax credit uh, or on cess paid on exported goods. Furthermore, compensation cess um, is not levied on the supplies made by taxable persons under the composition levy scheme. Then the input tax credit for compensation cess can, also, can only be used to pay the same cess uh, and cannot be applied toward other taxes like CGST, SGST, UTGST or IGST. Next, when the compensation cess is uh, based on the value of goods and services, the valuation must follow the guidelines uh, under the Section 15 of the Central Goods and Services Tax Act of 2017. Lastly, with respect to the legal framework, see the provisions of the Central Goods and Services Tax Act of 2017 and related rules, uh, including those on assessment, ITC, appeals, offences, and penalties uh, applied to the levy and collection of compensation cess for intra-state supplies. Furthermore, for interstate supplies, the Integrated Goods and Services Tax Act and its rules will be applicable. So, in this video, we have talked about seven articles in total. We'll be back again with another video tomorrow. Thank you.